Hello, everyone. I want to thank you again for sharing this time with me. This is Heart to Heart podcast, and I am just been so blessed by our guest, who is not just a guest, but she's a good friend. She's a woman of God that I admire so much, and I've learned so much. She's been a blessing to me, an example to me, and it's her name is Pastor Gail King from Chicago, Illinois, and she's going to be ministering to us today on our second episode concerning emotional healing. We're going to be discussing how do emotionally wounded people think, react, talk, and behave. We've all experienced, I would say, the blunt or the effects of dealing with people who have gone through emotional trauma. It could be in our own families. It could be in our workplace, in our schools, or or just our own personal trauma. And sometimes we ask ourselves, at least I've asked myself, why, Rosemary, why did you say that? Why are you acting that way? And it's been a wonderful, wonderful healing journey for me to know that there is not only the what I'm doing, but the why. And as Psalm 107, 20 says, God sends his word to heal us. So I want to introduce to you all again, Pastor Gail King. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Pastor Rosemary. Thank you for, uh, as I said again, your love, your encouragement, your wisdom over the body of Christ, over everyone listening today, and even over myself. I just honor you, and I thank you, and I thank God for bringing us here together because um, this particular episode, uh, The Signs of Emotional Trauma, uh, this is so important. Mm. And I think you um, first said that to me. You said, you know, the signs of emotional trauma, that really speaks to me. You know, you said that is mm -hmm. so important um, that people kind of recognize where these things are coming from. So I want to say that, like, in my own personal journey um, of what I've experienced and what I see other people going through in terms of emotional trauma is um, some of the, there's a lot of signs I'll say, I don't know, there could be, there could be 10 or 20 signs, but the ones that are most prominent. And I think that most of us uh, see on a day-to-day -day basis would be anger yes. Uh, we run into people mm. who like it has nothing to do with the situation. They're just angry. They are angry. And yes. sometimes, you know, and I'll say this in compassion. Sometimes they don't even know why they're angry, but they live True. a life of True. anger. Yes. And uh, also it comes out emotional trauma, past emotional trauma comes out in negativity. Many times people are just negative you know the instead of the clap the glass being half full their glass is always half empty and then also yes. um what yes. you hear uh or what you will experience with uh people who have experienced uh emotional trauma is hopelessness um and and that's one of the worst i just want to say because you know that's where suicide and all these things come from and, and behaviors mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. almost seem like they're seem like they're irreversible, but of course, you know, God has a way, but the hopelessness is, oh my God, one of the worst. And, and how could I describe that? I mean, that's a situation where the person just doesn't feel they can dig their cells out. They feel like they can't get up again. Like I just been knocked my down goodness. too many times. Mm. I can't get mm. up again. I'm, I'm tired of people telling me to suck it up and get up. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of people telling me to pull myself up by my bootstraps and I don't have any boots. Mm. You just don't understand. Okay. Yeah. So the hopelessness and then 
another sign, um, a fourth sign that you see a lot is the victim mentality where they, um, wow. where people who have really, really been hurt. We saw that in uh, slavery where, yes. you know, many of our people still today, instead of knowing that they're living in one of the greatest times ever, and there are so many things we can do, I mean, for free, for free. I mean, we don't have time to do everything there is to do for free, let alone, excuse me, we don't have time to do all the things that are for free, let alone all the things that we could possibly, you know, resources we could buy. But so we live in a great yes. time, but people with emotional trauma, they don't see it that way. They feel like, you mm. know, they're going out of the world backwards. You know, um, the world is going to, you know, where in a handbasket. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so all the conversations are marked with how bad it is, you know, for the world how bad it is for the U.S., how bad it is for my family, how bad it is for me, how bad it is for my job. So this victim mentality and not being able to know that God has downloaded in you before you were even born everything you need to, uh, to win in every situation. There's nothing we don't wow. have right now you know and and so um i don't i don't want to um linger there but i'll tell a um a quick story about these signs of emotional trauma um when i was a young mm. girl and i had a job at uh, a store which i'm sure you remember pastor rosemary in chicago it was called marshall field and company and yes, so, uh, yes, yes. And it was, it was just a very, very nice store. It's, it was a high end department store, uh, maybe kind of like Neiman Marcus is today or Saks Fifth Avenue is mm. today, but it was Marshall Fields. And so I had a job there and I was working in the cosmetic department and I was selling cosmetics. And so it was a weekend and weekends were busy and uh, I was working on commission and, um, so the more I sold, the more money I would make. So I was constantly aware all day of, oh, I need a sale. I need a sale. Mm, and so, okay. um, yeah. And, and, and the cosmetics there in Marshall Fields, they were really pricey, you know, as opposed to uh, makeup you might buy at Walgreens or someplace. So it was really high end. Mm -hmm. and, and back in those days, to be honest with you, it wasn't a lot of uh, African-Americans even in that store. Uh, certainly not mm -hmm. a lot working there, but uh, not a lot shopping there. So if you saw a minority shopping there, they generally, you know, were connected some kind of way because, you know, just of the prices in there. So anyway, I'm there selling makeup and a lady came to the counter. She was uh, an African-American lady. She came to the counter. So I was happy mm -hmm. to see her. And um, she started, um, uh, asking me, cause she see different makeups that were behind the counter, like powders, lipstick, mm -hmm. blushers and things like that. Eyebrow, eye makeup. And so, so I started showing her things. And as I began to show her things, she was very mean to me and she was just mm. talking down to me. She was condescending. She was like, um, just mean. I, I I don't even remember exactly what she was saying, but the woman was like really, really mean to the point where I might have said something like, I didn't say it, but I know I was wondering, like, why is she being so mean? And 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 I knew that, you know, I have human rights and that I don't have to mm -hmm. let anybody just verbally abuse me or be mean to me. I knew that you know, I had it in my power to get a supervisor or even to say something kind to her to let her know that, you know, maybe today isn't the day for her to be shopping for makeup. But even though and back then I wasn't saved, I wasn't saved. And so and, okay. and, and that's interesting because one of the things that really interests me is the fact that God works through people who aren't even saved. And the, the, a mm -hmm. great thing came over over me with this lady a grace overshadowed me and said, be kind to her. She's not being kind to okay. you. 
but be kind to her. So the, the meaner she got, the kinder I got. I said, do you want to see anything else? Well, you don't like that one. Let me show you this one. Maybe you'll like this one. And she got meaner and I got kinder. It was almost like we were having a showdown. And then finally, <laughs> I, 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 she said, you don't have to show me anything else. I said, okay. And, and, I, and, and I said, well, thank you for stopping by. And, you know, anytime you're around, please come back. And she stood there and she just looked at me and she said, I do want to buy something. I said, what do you want to buy? She said, everything you showed me. I said, everything. Wow. She said, everything. And back, and I mean, this was like, this is like, I don't want to date myself, but this was decades ago, okay? <laughs> when I pulled all mm -hmm. that stuff out, she was my biggest sale of the day. I think she bought over $150 worth of stuff which today would be like $500 or $700 worth of stuff. And I don't know if she wow. even knew what was in the bag. She said, give it all to me. And then while I was reading mm. it up, she said, she said this. She said, I'm sorry I was so mean to you. She said, I've been diagnosed with cancer. And thank you for your kindness. Oh, my. Wow. So I'm sorry to wax on so long, but about we know what that That's story okay. but but we're talking about the signs of emotional trauma and her sign was anger yes. and it was only the yes. holy spirit that got me through that yes yes and you know so, that's why when, when you talked about um how they think react talk and behave as you mentioned that about a person who's dealing with a life-threatening um, diagnosis, yeah. you know, back then. Not that it can be now. It can't be now. But, you know, back then, a lot of things, you know, people were, it just instilled fear when they hear certain words. That's right. You know, it just instills fear. And you were, I know one in your webinar um, that I was involved in. You also talked about other addictions like alcohol, yes. drugs, abuse, sexual um, addictions. A lot of things that we see the um, aftermath. We see the behavior, but the root cause is still takes time to deal with. Yes. And when you said that, it made me think that people we're dealing with those kind of issues every day. Yes. Emotional um, depression, all these things are signs, you know, not just because of a physical condition, but a lot of it is an emotional um, condition. And I know that you have a background because I'm looking at your uh, bio. You have, um, a bachelor's degree in counseling, psychology, and a master's degree in guidance and counseling also. And the thing about it, what impresses me is that that is only enhanced by your born again experience, being born again, that you know that all these things have some degree of help, but you recognize that it is the spirit of God that only can bring complete healing to a person, not just suppress it, but, but to bring about complete healing. So can, do you mind um, also letting us know that, um, do you feel that as a as a people with all the technology that we have that we are we are advancing in the process of helping people through emotional trauma? How does the church because we know that and I'm not putting medicine down but it it can only do so much. How how can we as a church help people like this because they're coming into the church. They're coming to Jesus. They're born again in their spirit, but there's a lot of soul, a damage 
attached to emotions that they're coming with? Pastor, that is an excellent, excellent question that really goes to the heart of this whole teaching about, you know, emotional trauma and how we get healed mm -hmm. from it. Um, because you are absolutely right. I'll start, I'll start with the world at large and just make a statement and then I'll talk about the church specifically in the world mm -hmm. at large, based on the statistics I've seen recently, um, emotional illness is, is worse than ever in the world. And I'm not trying to be negative there. Wow. That's just what the statistics are wow. saying right now that, uh, people are committing suicide at, uh, at a greater rate. Uh, I think once I read that somebody kills themselves like every, uh, 14 minutes or something in the world, somebody kills themselves, wow. but, and, and oh, you, yeah, this may have, this has touched many of our families. Like I actually know people who um, their children have committed suicide. So that's another yes, alarming statistic yes. is that um, it's not older people. It's young people. I mean, really yes, young people yes. uh, more than ever that are committing suicide. So to it's it's a big problem in the world. Um, and what the world is saying is that they don't have the money, the resources to minister to these people. Um, for instance, mm. in any neighborhood, whether the neighborhood is affluent or or middle or not, you can always find home, homeless people and people who are um, going through all kinds of, you know, emotional trauma. And they're just out on the street. Many of them don't have any place to uh, live or it, it, the problem is at, in the world at large, the problem is huge. And so now I'll go to the church now in the church. And you asked a specific question and I apologize for taking so long to uh, answer. No, you're you said, fine. How can, you're the fine. Church, how can the church address this problem? Well, the first thing that came to mind when you said that was small groups and you'll know mm, right where I'm going okay. with this. Because many yes, of our churches yes. in the U.S., and this is a good thing, you know, glory be to God, many of our churches have turned into mega churches where they have mm -hmm. 20,000. And even the ministry where you and I met is over 20,000 members. And then yes. uh, some uh, churches even bigger than that, where there's uh, over 30,000 in the U.S. And then overseas in Africa, they have churches that have over a hundred thousand ministry ministries. I'm, I'm sorry, not ministries, but uh, members. And so when you mm -hmm. have that many people coming in and out of the church, like a revolving door, how do you help the hurt? Because most of the people that come in are hurt and wounded. The large yes, majority right. of them. And so what the church has been able to do is get many of them to the altar to get saved, but they don't get much after that. And then That's they fall true. off and, and many true. people just wander right back out into the world and, and get cut up some more. But small mm. group, I believe, are the answer because I was talking to a woman of God um, um, just in the last week and we were discussing this issue of you know, what is needed to uh, bring on the healing of uh, emotional trauma. And most of it is from people's past. And I was saying yeah. in that very conversation that a person who is stuck emotionally and they just can't, uh, they, they don't feel like they're getting any better. They don't have the resources. They don't have the skill. They don't have the wisdom yet, but they're saved but they're, they're saved and suffering. And it's a lot of people mm. like that. Saved and suffering. Wow. And I said, and I said, what you need in a situation like that is you need one believer to take you by the hand and yes. mentor you, to coach you. Yeah. If you can't get into a yes. it could be a small group, like a little Bible study. Uh, or or a home based church, or um, or even just one person to mentor you. But what's key there is 
uh, you have to want to be healed. Mm. You have to be mm. willing to give up. See, Satan tries to show up for every pity party. And you have to be willing <laughs> to give up your, your complaining, um, your, your pity parties, which for many people, and I'm not saying it to be mean, mean have become a way of life. It's their identity. Yeah. They don't, they yes. don't know how to do yes. anything but cry. They've been crying so long. Yes. And yes. so when you try to yes. take their crying from them, that can feel uncomfortable. But they need one yeah. person. I said to someone this week, I said, when you're suffering from emotional trauma, you don't need another person to deliver you. You've been delivered 10 times. You need to be taught how to deliver yourself. Mm. Wow. And wow. so I, that's, that's the answer. They need a mentor to teach them. And you know what that reminds me of in um, Luke? And it talks about a man who was paralyzed and four friends, I think it was four friends, tore open the roof to let him down in front of Jesus who was ministering to people. And there were so many people you couldn't get in through the door. Yes. And sometimes people are hurting so bad they can't get in through the door, not on their own. They're so yeah. wounded, they're so battered, they don't trust because they feel like they've been, let, as you said before, let down. Yes. Yet if someone can care enough for them yes. to bring them before the Father in prayer or just speaking with them, yes, a kind word, or just having that patience to, you know, walk with them through this journey, because it is, it can be a journey. It is. And as you said, if so many times, if you've lived in that place for so long, it does, it's your, it's part of the identity. You, yes. It it feels normal, but it isn't normal. You just don't right. know what to do. And I know in my own personal life, why this is one of the reasons why this has helped me, because I had a, a child that was, is very gifted. And yet I was concerned, but I wasn't judgmental and I supported him, whatever he was doing. But I knew that that wasn't the direction God wanted to. I saw what he had. I saw, you know, the excellence and the intelligence, but I just, the direction he was going troubled me. I didn't, I, I thought it would do more harm than good. And God spoke as I'm praying for him, God began to talk about my emotional need, my need for emotional healing, mm -hmm. that my response to this child, my interaction to this child was hindering him. And that was because of the trauma in my own life. But I didn't realize that. So we, it was hard. It took me a while to have a conversation with him and to apologize to him. And ever since, and it was almost like a light came on for him. He was saying, mom, I, I knew I was different. I just didn't know what it was. He didn't know what that was, but that began, began the healing process. And our relationship is so wonderful today. Mm -hmm. Both of us are healed and we are continually being healed. Mm -hmm. And so I can see that when you talk about small groups, you know, and that's very important mm -hmm. that there is that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, that touch, that personal attention mm -hmm. that is needed where, uh, you know, a, a leader can't, if you got a thousand, 10,000 people in your congregation, you can't know everybody's name. That's right. I don't care how anointed you are. You can't know everybody and people want you to know, you know, when their birthday is and when they're children had a when they when you had a grandchild or whatever and you can't keep up with all that but they're right. under that umbrella there's other people who can and then there's other people under them who can That's and right. it's it's very important you know very important so do you mind sharing some a personal i know you were talking about the ads you were working in the um Marshall Fields department store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how is 
this emotional, this, these, how has this helped you personally? If you don't mind me asking. Okay. Um, as you know, from my testimony and, you know, even in my teachings that I've had a tremendous amount of, uh, emotional trauma in my own personal life, you know, as a child, um, I was molested in a daycare. As I said, you know, I was the youngest of five children. We were poor. I grew up without a father. Um, you know, as a, by the time I was 16, I wanted to commit suicide. And I really believe it was only the Holy Spirit that stopped me. I was going to slash my wrists. And then as a young woman, I had, you know, uh, very, very painful relationships. My heart was broken. Um, and I think a lot of it, had to do with the fact that I didn't have a father. So I didn't know what a healthy relationship with a man looked like. So, you know, I was very, very vulnerable and it went on and on and on to until uh, very, very early in my life. You know, even before I was 30, um, you know, I had uh, gone through a divorce, which I initiated, but that hurt too. And just so much had happened to me. It was unbelievable. And mm. I was crushed. I had so much anger in my heart. And I mean, it had gone beyond anger. It had turned into rage, rage. And uh, because I wow. just didn't, I didn't understand life. I didn't understand dating. I didn't understand why I came here. You know, it just, nothing made any sense to me until um, I began to, and, and I think that's why the Holy Spirit reached out to me and said, read the Bible. Because the whole world didn't make any sense until I started reading the Bible. Mm. And then I could see clearly that God was good and he was on my side, but that there is a evil force in the, in the earth, which we don't talk about. It's not fashionable to talk about the devil and hell and all those things, even though they're real. So, um, just, you know, going back to even what we said in the, in the last episode, uh, those scriptures began to do a lot of healing on my emotional life. But, you know, we're talking about today, we're talking about the signs of emotional trauma. And I'll give you another example. I remember once, um, uh, now this is after I was saved and um, a man of God was trying to talk to me. I think he wanted to marry and he thought that I was a good candidate. And so we were out having lunch and we were really having a good time and he was trying to get to know me and vice versa. And over lunch, he said, can you cook? When he said, can you cook? I snapped mm. and said, what do you mean? Can, can I cook? Can you cook? And I said, it real mean mm. too. And then I caught myself and I tried to laugh it off and, then later I got home and I thought about it and I said, oh, my God. And what I realized is that when I had been married, uh, my husband made me cook a lot. He never I, like I would get tired sometimes and I would want to just get some carry out food. Not a lot, but maybe, you know, once a week or something, just pick up something. And he said, no, I want a home cooked meal. And so, you know, I would I would acquiesce and just cook something. But even though I was exhausted sometimes, and this was like seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, um, I think that I had, I must've had some resentment in my heart and I could cook, you mm -hmm. know, like, I mean, I can, I'm not, I'm not Betty Crocker, but you know, I can make a home, I can make <laughs> a meal for the family and, you know, fix myself something pretty healthy now. But, um, so when he mm -hmm. said, can you cook? This is where the sign of emotional trauma, I lashed out as somebody who knew nothing about, I mean, you know, that's a normal question. Can you cook? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I repented, you know, and I, I don't remember if I uh, straightened it up with him or not. I, maybe, I, maybe I did. But so I just want to give that as an example of how you can have stuff buried in yes. your heart. You don't even know it's there. You know what I mean? Yes, 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 yes. Well, Pastor Carol, I just want to tell you again, it's it's really been good. This is just the conversation um, to know that this is something that we deal with. Sometimes we've always seen it, but we didn't know 
how to respond to it. Um, so I am I'm thankful for this time that we had uh together and I want to make sure that people understand that this we will we will be doing six sessions concerning emotional healing. And this is session number two. So we're looking forward to session number three. And I would like, I'm going to ask you, Pastor, could you pray for the people and those who will be listening to this podcast before we close? Yes, yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we enter your gates with praise and worship, Father God. We thank you again for just giving us this opportunity to minister to the body of Christ about this very, very important topic, Father God. I thank you for uh, Pastor Rosemary, Father God, and for uh, bringing us together and bringing this whole teaching together to be possible um, to offer it here on her podcast. And we just touch and agree, lifting up everybody under the sound of our voices, asking in the name of Jesus, Father, that you heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. We ask that you heal the spirit, heal the body, heal the soul, Father God. And more than anything, Father, we ask that you plant your word in their mind and their heart so that they have an arsenal of the word of God to use, Father, when they're attacked in the emotional realm of their life. And we also ask in, in Jesus name that you send workers across their path, send them mentors, Father God, people who are compassionate and who understand. And we ask all these things in Jesus name, Father, knowing that we have what we ask for and we call it done. Amen. 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 Thank you again, Pastor and for all of you that are listening, thank you also for being a part. Please like, share, subscribe. Go to Pastor's website, Gail Marie King, GailKing.com, G A I L K I N G.com, for a list of resources, all the things that God is doing through her at this time. We really appreciate it. It's much needed. God bless you all. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.